Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the episode of the Nick Egan Times. We have an awesome guest. We have Aaron Rako, who's a proud Italian Australian man, great family man, married to his wife Sky, and who is the principal and licensee at Rain in Horn, DY and Collaroy, and a mad manly supporter. Welcome, Aaron. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, mate. Thanks very much. Uh, pleasure to be here, and I'm glad you threw in there a diehard manly fan, mate, because uh, I can feel it for 2021. So can I. I can't wait, and I'm hell excited. <laughs> right. How's it all going? Mate, good, good. Yeah, look, it's, um, it's been unusual times, obviously, around the world with, with this uh, coronavirus, um, you know, challenging for us as well. Uh, you know, we started this business in, I think it was August 2019. Uh, and then a few months later, coronavirus hit. But, you know, we worked through it pretty strongly. Uh, we've got a great team here. We're um, progressing well. And the start of the year, or sorry, the lead up into Christmas was really, really strong in the market. A lot of buyers out there, lack of stock, and we're actually seeing the same thing this side of Christmas, um, which has been great, mate. So looking forward to a crack of 2021. That's exciting. Um, how did you How did you generally go through the COVID period and with the lockdown, the Northern Beaches quite recently as well? It, it was interesting, mate. I mean, the first lockdown period we had, uh, this is my coming into my 17th year in real estate. Um, and throughout those 17 years, I'd never quite been told that, stop, tools down, you can't do anything for five weeks. I think that was around April from memory, April, May, uh, when we had that initial lockdown. So waking up on a Saturday and not being able to get out there and meet people and show homes and apartments and talk to the team as we normally would was, was very unusual. But to get back into the swing of things after that, we adjusted quite well. Uh, I think the latest lockdown actually didn't affect us too much because we closed up on... The, um, we closed our business up on on uh, the 21st of Feb, uh, of, sorry, December and uh, reopened. Um, the team came back on the 4th of January, but I came back on the 2nd as sitting at home for two weeks was, <laughs> mate, was uh, more than enough. So I couldn't wait to get back into it. Yeah, sweet, mate. Um, let's jump straight into it. For the listeners, who is Aaron Rico? Uh, mate, I'm a, a simple guy that really, um, you know, I, I got into this business, I wouldn't say by chance. Um, my father and mother had a, a delicatessen at Bagala that, that, uh, in the old totem and were super hard workers. Um, you know, so for me, uh, all I've done since I've come out of school was real estate. Uh, mate, I love my Manly, uh, the Manly Seagulls. I love to um, jump on my dirt bike. In my spare time, uh, you know, that really separates me uh, from from the reality. And, and because I do work six days a week, quite long hours, things that just escapes me, uh, allows me to escape really. And um, and just think about myself, have a little bit of me time whilst also spending it with my wife, Sky and my uh, the beautiful uh, dog, Cooper. Impressive. Uh, tell me about growing up on the Northern Beach and how, Northern Beach, sorry, and how you enjoyed it. Mate, it was great. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, knock around with you back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, many moons ago. So, mate, it was, uh, it was good. You know, not life on the beaches was great. It was, uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. As kids, you know, um, I went to St. Augustine's uh, and then finished my, my senior years at Cromer High School where I, I met my beautiful wife, Skye. Um, you know, everything's very local. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, you know, getting from one end of the peninsula to the other end of the peninsula isn't that difficult when you're a kid. Uh, fortunately, we didn't have all of this Instagram and Facebook like we do now. I think that can be a bit of a distraction for kids these days. But, um, mate, growing up, it was good. I had a great childhood. My parents are absolutely wonderful people. Um, you know, my father's a pretty traditional, hard Italian Aussie bloke, but, you know, um, he uh, is a great father and my mum's a beautiful person, beautiful soul, and got a great brother. Uh, my brother, Anthony, is a, a builder and... Um, a real passionate guy, so we get on great. And he's just had a little daughter, um, so I'm an uncle for the first time, which is uh, which is really really exciting. Congratulations! Uh, mate, growing up was excellent. Yeah, it was good. Wonderful. Uh, tell me about your family and specifically your Italian heritage. Uh, I believe your grandparents migrated here in the 1930s. Yeah, look, my father's um, side were from Terranova, a town um, on the south of Italy in Calabria. They came here in the 30s. So quite early, actually. I think uh, my, my father's brother went to the US uh, and he came here. 
Uh, sorry, yeah, my grandfather's brother went to the US and, and my grandfather came here. Then they sort of touched base and everyone came to Australia. Um, so that's from my father's side. Um, and then my mother's side came here in, I think it was 51. Uh, a lot of the Southern Calabresi Italians, they came over on the same boats, actually. Uh, a lady from Narawina wrote a book, uh, which was quite interesting about all of the Italian families with all of their names that came over on the same boats. Um, in the 50s, and my grandmother came from a, a town called Grotteria. Um, she did have a pretty, uh, a, you know, a hard, hard childhood. Um, she was uh, an orphan uh, taken in by the Famia and Kakamo families uh, as, as a young child. And, and um, from there came over here and with her husband and two sons started a pet shop in the Totem, uh, had fruit shops. My family's a very fruit and veg background. Um, actually, both sides are fruit and vegetable. <laughs> as all the local Italians do. Um, so look, the heritage is um, you know, a big part of us. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to, to head over there and experience it for myself due to working all the time, but um, myself and Sky are very keen to get over there and um, you know, see, see the heritage. Awesome. Tell me about going to Cromwell High School, which is obviously local in the Northern Beaches, uh, how you met Sky, and I believe it was 16 years ago. Uh, tell me about the story of how you met and how it all transpired. Mate, that's a really interesting one. I, I wasn't the best student at St. Augustine's. It was a good school. Um, it was sort of got to the point where I had to, to as a kid, to make a move. Um, and then I, I remember a few buddies of mine said they were going to Cromer. They changed from St. Augustine's to Cromer in, in Year 10. And I said to my mum, look, you know, I really want to go to Cromer. And a few, a few friends are going there. She said, oh, look, you know, I don't, don't think it's the right school. I don't think it's the right school. Then all of a sudden she said, look, you know, we're going to go to Cromer and check it out. And we did. And next minute I was uh, I was a student at Cromer High School. I had a great education there. And it was actually a funny one because going through um, year six to year 10 at an all-boys school, um, then going 11 and 12 to a co-ed school, my grades actually went up because I was so quiet being in front of all these females. Um, <laughs> through all my classes, I just sat in the room, shut up and did my work. Um, so my grades actually went up, which was quite surprising. Um, I met Sky at school. I, I was in year 12. I think she was in year 10. Uh, and we've been an, an item ever since. We are fortunate, fortunate enough to um, get married in, um, in December 2017. Uh, with our family down at uh, Manly Pavilion. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and, Matt, we're, uh, yeah, continuing strong, which is great. Amazing. Um, where have you travelled in Australia or internationally? Uh, Matt, I've been not to a great deal overseas. I've got a lot of family in the United States, in Virginia, San Diego and Las Vegas. Um, so one of my favourite things is to go over there, especially for Christmas. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be there this Christmas, but that didn't work. I couldn't even leave uh, my yeah. street, let alone the country. Um, so, mate, look, I, I love going to the US. Um, I'd really like to experience my heritage in Italy. I haven't been there yet, but I'd like to. And, mate, I love Australia. I love the Gold Coast. Uh, I love down south, uh, Bowral, Mittagong. Um, mate, I absolutely love this country and uh, I do want to experience more of it. But I've been uh, uh, to, to every capital city other than Darwin and I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to call home. Awesome. Are you planning with Sky to have kids in the future? Mate, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, starting this business was a huge step for us uh, and put a lot of things on hold that uh, probably a lot of other people are doing or or, or probably we should be doing at this age. However, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're fit, we're healthy. Um, we wanted to focus on our business first. Um, and, you know, in, in, in the next, I'd say, one to two years, probably within the next one year, we, we, we'd love to grow our family. Um, and I think we'll be able to because the business will be running pretty smoothly by then. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, talk about your career. So I believe you applied for two jobs, one in the New South Wales Police Force and one in real estate. The real estate came back to you and you took that job in Avalon where you were handed the white pages and told to call everyone north of the Narrabeen Bridge and to see if they wanted to sell starting from A to Z. Talk me through that to where you are now. Mate, that was tough. I'll never forget it. I sat on this desk with just a phone on it. And the lovely lady, Deborah, walked over and said, here's the local 
white pages, as you mentioned, called Everybody North of Narrabeen. And mate, I started at A and finished at Z and called everyone. Uh, we paid about $280 a week. Um, I think it was in a, in a check. And sometimes a check used to actually bounce and uh, oh, I had God. to wait to get paid. But look, I got paid. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle. My parents live right down near the Spit Bridge. So I had to drive all the way to Avalon every day. Um, but mate, starting off, I, I did apply for the police force uh, and that I heard back from real estate first. Uh, mate, thank God uh, that, that, that happened. I, I count my lucky stars every day because I absolutely love this business. Uh, I love working with um, the new people I meet every day and I love having the team that we have here at Rain and Horn. It's been uh, quite a journey the last 17 years, but uh, very lucky I heard from uh, the real estate first. Yeah, cool. And talk to me, you joined, um, obviously, Rain and Horn. Um, how, is, how is the actual transition from obviously just selling houses to actually owning it now? Um, Matt, look, you know what? The biggest challenge in a business is not starting it up. And we did everything from photocopy of contracts to uh, engaging uh, a builder, stylists, uh, fitting out a whole office, all the subscriptions uh, that we, we need as an office. The hardest thing is, is choosing the right staff, having those staff members believe in your vision and then having it within yourself to drive and help your staff get to where they want to be in their life as well. Um, you know, it's very humbling as a... As, as an employer to have people believe in you and believe in your vision, turn up every day, answer the phone um, with a smile on their face uh, and really want to excel in themselves in their role as well. Uh, being a standalone sales agent, I was very, very different. I was very cutthroat. I was very, uh, this has to happen, that has to happen, you need to do this, you need to do that. And my staff retention was actually really poor. Uh, I had several assistants um, that worked with me. And they all were lovely, lovely girls. Uh, I had a few associates um, that worked with, worked with me as well. And, and being so cutthroat and so, um, you know, one-eyed in your vision and not caring really about their vision, um, that I, I sort of really struggled with. But when I made this transition into being a business owner and a, and a team leader and sharing my vision, I've really sort of embraced... Um, other people within my business and been super thankful for their support and, you know, in turn, I've been supporting them. So the biggest transition for this really wasn't starting the business to scratch. It's getting the right people and, and keeping those people. And thankfully I've got a, a great team of seven here now where um, we all, uh, we all get along like a, like a house on fire and we all uh, have got the same vision, the same goals. And, you know, we're, we're backed by a very strong brand in Rain and Horn as well. Uh, and, you know, we had the choice to choose between a few franchise um, when we started this business. Uh, you know, we sat down with a few and, and we really looked at this old Rain and Horn franchise because when we did um, do this process, there was a previous franchisee here in the same office under Rain and Horn and they did an absolutely phenomenal job um, of maintaining, um, you know, a, a business here. Uh, they're great operators and they still are. They're still in the local area under a different brand and, and they are a business that is very, very strong. Um, you know, we get on with all of our competitors and we thought, look, you know, there's an opportunity to run off the back of their success with a strong brand. I had a great database. And mate, that's how, how it all started. It was just me and Sky to begin with. Then we hired our lovely property manager, Jess. Um, you know, then we got Michael on board, who's my associate. We've got uh, Tiana, our receptionist, Katie, our property management assistant. Now, Andrew, who's also working along me as well. So we're growing... We're growing slowly, but um, made in the right direction. Yeah, mate, that's great insights. Um, what is the biggest amount of a house sale you've ever done? Um, look, as an individual home, around the four million mark. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to work on a few development sites, um, which which has been uh, you know total gross sales of twenty five million, another one total gross sales of seventy two million. Wow. Um, you know, so I've been fortunate enough to really have a passion for project marketing. And, now, you know, I've put that to side a little bit at the moment because my focus is elsewhere in the business of in, in driving and running a team. And, and, and I love selling a, a one-bedroom apartment and a $5 million home. Um, you know, I, I was successful in securing uh, 
the largest development on the northern beaches, which was going to be approximately two to 220 apartments here in DY. I travelled to China uh, three times um, and met with our clients. Uh, we understood their background. They, they, they were building uh, in excess of 2,000 apartments a year there. So I was successful in securing their business here for all of those apartments exclusively, um, you know, which was a real big win for me. That was a really going to be a life and game changer. Unfortunately, that was put on hold just with council and funding uh, and China stopping money coming over into Australia and Australia stopping um, money coming into China. But, you know, that's been put on the back burner. That'll probably happen in the next five to 10 years and hopefully we still maintain that relationship with that client. That's insightful and that's, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, how did you find going to China? I've never been there personally. What's it like? Um, mate, you know what? I, I'll be really honest with that. China is probably one of the most beautiful places I've been to. I love their culture. Uh, they're very, it's a very misunderstood culture. Um, I feel that they are far in advance of the Western world. Um, I think they're great people. They very much remind me actually of, of traditional Italians or Greeks. It's all about family with them. It's all about family. It's all about, um, you know, being one. It's all about sharing. Uh, I love their culture. Uh, they've got some of the most beautiful landscape I've, I've ever been. You know, I was fortunate enough to run up to the top of one of the most sacred mountains called Lushan uh, in Jiangxi province, which was uh, made amongst the clouds. It was phenomenal. Uh, I really, really recommend anyone go to that country once it opens back up to us. Yeah, marvellous. Um, tell me about your hobbies and interests. Mate, I'm, I'm a passionate manly supporter. Um, I'm lucky enough to also be great friends with, uh, with the, the, the only man in the 500 club, Steve Menzies. Um, as a kid, I wore number 11 and, uh, and a headgear because of Steve. Uh, and fortunately, we've become friends uh, personally and professionally. Uh, so, mate, I'm a diehard manly supporter. Um, I, uh, I love my cars. I love my uh, dirt bikes. Matt, I've always been a car fan, a big V8 fan. Uh, you know, I love the V8 supercars. But I, I love spending time with, with my dog, Cooper and Sky. You know, for me, um, just chilling at home with them is um, it's one of my favourite things to do. Seeing my parents, my brother, and now that he's got uh, beautiful Malia, you know, for me, it's, it's um, a very different experience to have... A, a younger new generation in the family. So, you know, as of late, I've really enjoyed spending time with them. And, and then, mate, when I want it to be just me, there's just absolutely nothing better than jumping on a Harley or jumping on a dirt bike and just experiencing nature and just get lost with with that bike and with your thoughts. And and um, sometimes it just makes you feel how thankful you are to wake up and and, um, and you know, live in a beautiful world in a beautiful area with beautiful people. So, uh, mate, that's what I like to do. Definitely. Um, you're a supervising volunteer for Street Mission Australia, which I believe you've been doing that for about two and a half years. Talk to me about that. Mate, um, yeah, I am. I am. Street Mission is a local charity that provides meals to the less privileged or the homeless, potentially, um, you know, if they don't have anywhere to live. Uh, so on Wednesdays and Saturdays, they gather Wednesday nights at um, Oaks Avenue DY at the local church there and on Saturday nights at the Pioneer Clubhouse in Bagala, Manly Vale, just off Bagala Road there. So what we do is we provide meals for them. Uh, so someone can come in, they can have a three-course meal, pretty much two mains and a dessert. We talk to them, have a chat, learn about their life stories. Um, it's actually great, mate. I love it. I love connecting with that part of the community. Um, they all have a story. Uh, they all have, um, you know, a discussion they they feel for them is important. And listening to that as well, I like to, and I like to give them my insights. Um, I actually have some of them walk into my office uh, and just walk in and say, is Aaron here? Just to say g'day. Um, you know, I had one gentleman that leaves me notes at the reception desk saying, oh, you know, can you pass this on to Aaron? Um, just because we talk, I love talking with a mate and, and just, you know, making them feel like they're one and also humbling myself with them as well because um, everyone's got a story, everyone's got a past, uh, and I believe everybody is, is, is of equal. So to be able to 
give back and, and, and talk to these people on their level and, you know, experience that feeling of, of joy when you cook for them and you give them food and you talk to them on their level, mate. It's, it's great. And I reckon anyone should join Street Mission. Uh, just Google them, go to their Facebook page. You can um, apply to be a volunteer. Uh, it's very, very re rewarding. Yeah, that's awesome. And I couldn't agree more, agree more with you. Giving, obviously, is the best thing you can do. Um, talk to me about your a major sponsor for the Christian Brothers Junior Rugby League Club locally and the Long Reef Surf Club locally. Yeah, um, man, I, I love seeing kids in sport. All I ever did was play sport. Um, you know, I was talking about my to, to my mum the other other day, actually, while watching the test match on TV. My mum turned around. She goes, oh, I bloody hate cricket. I'll never forget when I used to have to sit there for four hours watching you play on a Saturday afternoon. Um so, you know, kids love sport. Uh, and, you know, I, I was a junior for Christian Brothers Junior Rugby League Football Club. Um, I was there probably from under eights to about under 16s. And I absolutely loved playing footy. Um, you know, so I wanted to give back to that club. Uh, you know, seeing the smiles on the kids' faces uh, every Saturday morning uh, is great. Uh, so I hope um, I have the chance to help Christian Brothers grow as well. Uh, and Longy Surf Club, one of the uh, most historic surf clubs on the Northern Beaches, over 50, 70 years, sorry, um, history, uh, over 400 nippers. They've got a brand new clubhouse coming soon as well. It's going to be state-of-the-art clubhouse. So for me to jump into the community and uh, and uh, be lucky enough to sponsor Long Reef Surf Club, that was a big one for me. And uh, maybe we were down there last Saturday and the smiles on the kids' faces, they go up, they grab a, a snag and a and a and a Coke and, and they sit there afterwards after having fun out on the sand, mate. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's great. I actually uh, really enjoy going down to the surf club as well. That's amazing. Just getting back to real estate briefly, what is your insights for the future of the real estate market? Obviously because of COVID, the impact, what does that look like in the future? Um, can you just say that again? Sorry, Nick. What does the future look like for the real estate market just in general now? for Sydney and maybe even Australia, just in your opinion, what does it look like? Because sure. Um, COVID as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I think, Nick, it's, it's, it's a really tough question. I believe the Northern Beaches, we're super lucky. It's a peninsula. So we've only got that limited amount of land. Um, one of the, the biggest things at the moment is trying to get a hold of a potential development. So there's developers everywhere that are trying to buy um, and they're paying a little bit more than normal, but there's just such a lack of opportunity um, with developments at the moment because of that, you know, the shortage of land. We're very fortunate here. Um, you know, the, they call it good old insula, peninsula, and I think that's true. A lot of people are buying who are local and staying in the area. But interestingly enough, since COVID, we're seeing a lot of people from the inner east, um, you know, being Darlinghurst, right into the eastern suburbs and the inner west, wanting to buy over to the northern beaches is they just see the lifestyle of the beaches as so, um, uh, you know, it's something that everybody wants. Everyone wants to be able to walk 500 metres to the beach or walk a kilometre to the beach where it's level, grab a coffee on the way, maybe even on the way drop the kids to school, where I feel that or they feel that in the eastern suburbs or the inner west you've always got to be driving or things are a little bit far. Um, the northern beaches is all about lifestyle, uh, you know, and those people that are working in the city are now working from home or they only have to go to the city once or twice a week. So they're prepared to jump on the B-line bus, which takes you 30, 40 minutes to get into the city um, and rather have that lifestyle on the weekends or in the evenings or in the mornings. I mean, this morning I was walking down the beach and I saw a guy on a Zoom call on his mobile phone whilst he was walking. Um, sure. You know, it's all, it's all about lifestyle. I think that's going to change globally. Um, I think that, you know, office space in the city has declined. The rental spaces uh, there, the rental per square metre has dropped significantly. The vacancies there are, are super high. Um, countries with strong economies like Australia are going to be seen by other countries as a, a very stable investment if they can invest here. Uh, so, Matt, I think we are very, very lucky. I think we've got some people may disagree. We've got a great government behind us at the moment uh, being that are being put through some times that we haven't seen for, you know, 101, 102 years. 
Uh, they're doing an outstanding job and, and, and it is showing across the world. I mean, my cousins in the States and yours are probably saying the same, that Australia is one of those countries to look up to uh, with the handling of COVID. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of Australia, where do you see Australia positioned in the future? Mate, I think Australia is going to be a leading investment country. It's going to be a leading investment country in the way it's safe to park money here. Um, I do believe that we need to be a little bit more flexible on allowing money to come in. Um, I'm not a big fan of foreign countries buying, let's say, grazing land, buying milk farms, buying cow farms, buying whatever it is they're, they're buying. Um, I do believe that should stay in Australian hands. But I also am a big believer that, you know, big foreign money drives economies. And, and I think Australia has to be a little bit more lenient with that. And I think moving forward due to our handling of the coronavirus outbreak, that other countries are going to be more willing to park money here. Yeah, definitely. And I agree with that. I think that's spot on 100%. Um, where do you and Sky see yourselves in the next 10 years? Oh, mate, that's, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, Last time I asked, this was in, an, in a real estate interview about 15 years ago. <laughs> I, I said, hopefully still trying to be in the same business. Um, mate, I see ourselves in 10 years. Mate, I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. And I want to have a great business with great people. I don't want 60 staff. I'd love to have a, a, a team of 20 with a business that just really, uh, you know, allows us to have a roof over our head. Um, and allows all of our staff to have a roof over our head, over their head, sorry, have a stable income for them. Uh, mate, that's what I want, where I'd like to be in 10 years. Yeah, that's great insights. Uh, Aaron, thank you for joining the podcast. I do appreciate it. I wish you and your business all the best, best success in 2021 and look forward to you smashing your sales this year. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on here. And, you know, I hope uh, the Nick Egan Times is rated as... Uh, one of the top five podcasts on uh, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, mate. Man. Appreciate it. Go, man. Go, Manly. Go, Manly. All the best. See you, mate. Bye.